The Congo River is the second longest in Africa after the Nile and is the deepest river in the world. The river bears the name of one of the great kingdoms of Africa, which tragically was to fall victim to the ambitions of the Europeans. The people south of the river lived in the largest portion of the kingdom, covering parts of what are today the Democratic Republic of the Congo, the DRC, and Angola. About a hundred years later, some people began to move northwards and settled in what became the Republic of Congo and Gabon. Less than a century after the Congo Kingdom was established, Portuguese sailors arrived at the court of the Mani Congo and Zinga a Ukuru in 1483. The Mani Congo and his son and heir were persuaded to become Christian. He took the name João I and his son became known as Afonso. By the time Afonso became king in 1509, the seeds for European domination of this part of Africa had been sown. A year later, the Portuguese began what became known as the transatlantic slave trade. But most communities were opposed to the slave trade, and this period of African history has given rise to one of the best-known queens of that era who resisted the Portuguese. She was Queen Nzinga of the Ndongo Kingdom. She was a deft diplomat, a skilled negotiator and brilliant tactician. She managed to hone her skills during her long life. In 1622, she went to Luanda at first to try to negotiate with the Portuguese on the royal family's behalf. The Portuguese official was seated and he expected Nzinga to sit on the floor on a rug. Affronted by this, she commanded one of her male attendants to go down on all fours and she sat on him instead. But the balance of power shifted over the years in favour of the Portuguese and Nzinga died in 1663, unable to stop their ascendancy in the region. But then another great African woman rose to the fore and tried to restore the glory of Congo. Her name was Kimpa Vita. She was from a noble family and was regarded as a prophetess by her followers. She had her own Christian movement and was bitterly opposed to slavery. She led a revolt against the Portuguese in the early 1700s. Elle s'impose au 18e siècle dans l'histoire du Congo en tant que résistance résistante à la domination portugaise. Mais ce qui est important, c'est que cette femme a donné sa vie pour le salut du royaume puisque elle sera brûlée vive. The heroic resistance of Kimpa Vita and her violent death in 1706 at the hands of her enemies have secured her place in the history books. But such efforts to save the Kingdom of Congo ultimately failed, and by 1880, most of it had been reduced to decentralized trading villages. This period ushered in a dramatically new and tragic chapter for the people of Congo. Thank you.